Thanks for tuning in to this episode of English Turks, where I review your favorite Turkish series with and without English subtitles. Guys, I've been gone for two episodes, and that's with good reason. I wasn't feeling well. I actually lost my voice. I got it back in time to review last week's episode, but because I was still recovering, I thought I'd just jump back in here on this episode and walk through this one with you guys. I'll definitely refer to some of last um, the last two episodes in my review, but I'm going to try to keep my reviews short, no longer than 10 minutes, um, and hopefully that will be enough to get all the details in. I won't go word for word for each scene, but if that's something that you really like, let me know in the comments below, and I'll do that again. Now we, So I'm going to be doing today's review on Adim Farah episode 20. We open the episode where we left off in episode 19, which is Ben I'm catching um, Tahir breaking into the safe, and he hits him over the head. Now, how did he find out about this? Of course, it would be Ilias. Ilias was always like, I don't understand. It's like he wants, you think he wants to be a good guy just because of how he portrays himself, but in all honesty, he just has a wicked heart. And so... Um, Benam ends up sending Tahir over to Iran, a prison in Iran, and he goes back home casually to marry Fada. Well, Fada thinks of an old tradition called Idet, which is what she wrote on the sheet of paper. We got to see that in episode 19. We didn't know what it was, but she wrote Idet on this sheet of paper, gave it to Benam's mom, and Benam's mom just goes ahead and steps in and says that they can't get married for at least three months, which is the waiting period after a woman gets divorced from her husband. She needs to be chaste or like, you know, have no male attention for three months. I guess that's her thinking period or whatever to make sure that this is what she wants before she could pursue or get married to somebody else. And so this actually ends up working because the uncle is very into tradition. And so he tells Benham they can't get married for three months, can't even look at her, can't be in private with her, or anything like that. Benham is obviously pissed, and he's trying to figure out why is his mom always getting in his way. And that's kind of really telling. We also got to see, finally, uh, Bakir lets, uh, Gonul know that he likes her and ends up kissing her and this was a great segue into the fact that we no longer have Khan because then she presents Bakir with the divorce papers that Khan supposedly sent her from America and she literally signed after he kissed her so I'm guessing there's going to be a love story going on in there and Bakir also started working for um, Tahir he's the one that was able to get the code for the safe but because they were spying on them that's how Ilyas found out that they were going into the safe to get information now Benam tries to trick Fada into seeing if she was going to open the safe because if she was then he would know that she's been communicating with Tahir and that that's how Tahir found out that the video is in the safe and you know all this stuff so in the end it just turns out that Farah realizes that she's being conned and she doesn't end up going in the safe good for her now of course Tahir is over there in this prison he, he's able to trick all the guys beat them up and then he finds this little boy and he also realizes that Farah's mom was living in this prison cell now, in the midst of him finding that Fada's mom was living in this prison cell, um, he had to verify that by getting D DNA testing. So when he runs into Fada at the office, he actually takes a few strands of her hair, puts it in a bag, and ends up having to, you know, um, work out things with his brother. And that's, of course, Mehmet. And Mehmet's like, okay, well, if I help you, you're going to help me, and you're going to get the papers from the police station to find out who my brother is and he does but the papers say that his brother is actually dead 
They don't give him the actual name of his brothers because the Aga years ago had made sure that that information was hidden. And so they dig up this grave and they see there's no one in the grave. So we see him grieving at one point and then he's excited and happy and he's hugging who is his brother, but he doesn't know that, which was really kind of cool to see. Of all the things in this episode, I think it's very interesting seeing how everything plays out, especially even that part with Kerem Shah, who's learning all these bad things from um, Mahmoud. He's learning all these negative things about women, and he's going through a lot of conflict because the mother also has to step in and kind of erase those thoughts. Now, Benham obviously is going to use this information about Mehmet and Tahir being brothers against both men by convincing Mehmet to murder Tahir on his behalf, and he'll let him know who his brother is, and then he'll say, oh, your brother is Tahir. Crazy. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. I hope keeping it short, simple, and sweet was fun for you guys, and I will talk to you guys in the next